Hi everyone, Dr. Matt here, and in this video we're going to look at brain tumour symptomatology, which is essentially how do brain tumours cause different types of symptoms. So in this video we're going to start with a definition, then we're going to look at the way we can categorise, broadly categorise brain tumours, and then we're going to finally have a look at how, with the symptoms associated with brain tumours, how we can categorise them into global effects or generalised effects, and the effects that are more localised within the brain, which we call focal effects. So let's start with what a brain tumour is. So a brain tumour is essentially abnormal growth of cells that are found within the skull or cranium. So these brain tumours are quite varied, quite diverse. There's over 120 different types of brain tumours. And this could be due to the, the cells that they originate from or how they look down the microscope, which we call histology, their genetic makeup, the grade or the location of the brain tumour. But an easier way that we can use to categorize brain tumors is what we call a primary brain tumor, meaning the cells originated within the central nervous system, so that's the brain or spinal cord, or they're secondary or metastatic, meaning they came from somewhere else in the body and they moved up into the brain. So primary brain tumors, so these are those that originate in the brain itself, more common in children. The most common subtypes are what we call meningiomas. So meningiomas come from the meninges. Now the meninges are the wrapping around the central nervous system. So if the cells, the abnormal growth of cells came from that layer, they, and they usually migrate inwards, that would be a meningioma. Whilst a glioma come from the supportive cells of the neurons. So this could be astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, for instance. And these are more found within the brain itself. These two types make up over two thirds of the primary brain tumor. So they're a very common subtype of primary brain tumor. When we look at secondary brain tumors or metastatic brain tumors, these are more common in adults. And the most common subtype, so this is where they come from, lung cancers, so approximately 20% of secondary brain tumors come from lung tissue. About 10% come from the renal system or kidney tumors. Melanomas, which is in the skin, so specifically the melanocytes, make up about 7% of secondary brain tumors, and then breast tissue or breast tumors can metastasize in about 5% of cases in secondary brain tumors. Now, regardless of the brain tumor itself, they can cause symptoms. So this is why we're going through the symptomatology, so the understanding of why brain tumors cause different types of symptoms. Now, a way that we can better understand in how they produce symptoms is whether they produce symptoms that are generalized, so affecting the whole brain, or whether they're focal or localized, so they are affecting particular regions of the brain. So if a brain tumor invades or compresses a local region of the brain, we're more likely to see focal changes or focal symptoms, whilst if the brain tumor is changing the environment of the brain, so chemical environment causing inflammation, changing neurotransmitters, changing ions, things like that, they're more likely to cause generalized changes within the brain. So let's start with generalized symptoms. The most common symptom associated with brain tumor is a headache. So over, so well over 50% of persons with brain tumors will experience a headache. Now the first thing just to be mindful of, brain tissue itself doesn't have pain receptors. So the brain won't experience pain. So there are other structures associated with brain, particularly the wrapping of the brain, the meninges, that if it's compressed or stretched, it can report pain. So it's most likely the reason of that. So if the brain is swelling or there's inflammatory chemicals that can cause an irritation to the meninges or connective tissue covering of the brain and that can cause headaches. The headaches are likely to be dull, not well localized, and worsening over time. Sometimes things that can make the headache worse is a change in position. So if you put your head down, that would make the headache worse, throbbing at times, but also changing the pressure within your thorax. So if you were to cough, sneeze, or produce a valve salva maneuver, that would make the headache worse. Next, we have seizures. So again, over 50% of patients will experience seizures. Now seizures are essentially an abnormal of electrical activity within the brain tissue. So this can be effect in movement or it can affect behavior. The reason for why that in terms of a generalized effect to brain regions to cause seizures could be a change in the neurotransmitters in the brain caused by the tumor or ions in the brain. So this is like sodium, potassium, calcium, and that can change the way that the impulses are sent down the neurons, which increase their activity or their excitability. Other things could be if the brain is not getting well 
oxygenated through blood flow, or there's an increase in inflammation or swelling within the brain that can lead to seizures. Next, we go to nausea and vomiting, which is also very common in brain tumors. The nausea and vomiting center of the brain, which is located in the brainstem, is known as the chemoreceptor trigger zone. So this is a group of neurons and they process information that can induce the feeling of nausea or vomiting. So sometimes when the brain is swollen or there's a tumor that increases the space in the brain that can increase the pressure within the skull, which we call an increase in intracranial pressure. And that can start to compress parts of the brain, and in this case, parts of the brainstem, which can compress or irritate that um, nausea vomiting center, which can induce the feeling or wanting to vomit. Finally, we have a loss of consciousness. Again, this will probably go with the increase in intracranial pressure. So as the pressure within the skull builds up, it's harder to get blood into the brain through the arterial blood vessels. So if it's harder to get the blood in, we can't bring blood and nutrients and oxygen to the brain, and then the brain can lose consciousness for short periods of time. Finally, we're gonna finish off in the focal or the localized impacts of brain regions which induce symptoms. The frontal lobe is the most commonly impacted region of the brain with brain tumors. So about 26% of all brain tumors will impact this part of the brain. So two, two fifths of the brain is the frontal lobe. So it's a, a very big region of the brain and it has a lot of diverse functions. But some common functions that it plays is the production of movement. So it, it controls, it has an, a region of the brain called the primary motor center, which controls the whole movement of the body. So a tumor pressing on or invading this part of the brain can either make less movement, which is weakness, or an increase in movement, which is more like seizures, but it's a focal seizure, which we could see through a, like a tonic-clonic type of seizure. Another region of the frontal lobe is what we call the Broca's center, which is the motor um, control of speech. So tumors that impact that part of the brain can change the production of speech, which we call an expressive asphasia. Other regions are more ex executive functions of the brain. So this would be um, mood, personality, memory, um, difficult, more challenging tasks like planning. So these effects by the frontal lobe can be impacted by brain tumors. The next region is the temporal lobe, which is located here. About 19% of brain tumors impact that part of the brain. Now it's located near your ears, so it plays a very important role in processing auditory functions. So changes in hearing is common within tumors of the temporal lobe. Also a more receptive, so an understanding of language can be impacted. Not the production of speech, but the understanding of speech. So this is a receptive aphasia is more common in the temporal lobe. Moving to the parietal lobe, so about 12% of brain tumors impact the parietal lobe. This is this region here. The parietal lobe has a very important role in processing sensory information. So all the sensations that are coming from the body, or which we call the somato, somatosensory processing. So brain tumors that are causing focal changes in that part of the brain can cause a change in um, responding to sensory information. So this could be pins and needles or even numbness. It also has a role in language, so certain understanding of language, written language like reading, but also um, understanding faces can be impacted by the temporal lobe. Now we move down to the bottom region of the brain. So we have the cerebellum here, which is about 5% of brain tumors impact the cerebellum. More commonly with metastatic or secondary brain tumors seem to be more likely to migrate to the cerebellum. The cerebellum has a very important role in fine tuning movement, the coordination of movement, but also muscle tone. So tumors impacting the cerebellum can make a patient feel unsteady, which we call ataxia, with coordinating movement, but also eye movement. So the way that the eye can coordinate with following visual stimuli can be impacted, and that can lead to a symptom known as nystagmus, which is like a shaking, both in a vertical plane or a horizontal plane. Finally, we finish in the brainstem. So about 4% of brain tumors impact the brainstem. And so this is this region here, made up of three parts, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. Some important structures that come out of this are cranial nerves. We have a lot of cranial nerves that go to the eye. So the way that the eye moves can be impacted by brainstem tumors, but also sensory to the face, the trigeminal nerve can be impacted. So changes in sensation to the face. And then we have the vagus nerve, 
which plays a very important role in swallowing and speech. So tumours that impact that can cause a problem with, which we call dysphagia, which is a challenge with swallowing, or the production of speech. So there we have it. So hopefully you have a better understanding of the symptomatology with brain tumours. Now you can understand we have generalised effects, so that's more global changes to the brain, and more localised effects, which we call focal effects.